And now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Pup Wheat yes. and Quaker Pup Rice, yes. the breakfast cereal shot from guns, yes. Yes. present the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, raising the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one huskies. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker Pup Wheat and Quaker Pup Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet... The challenge of the Yukon. Say, did you hear the news? It's terrific. Listen. Quaker puffed wheat and rice, the swell tasting, ready to serve breakfast cereals shot from guns, are offering you the chance of a lifetime. You've an opportunity to win a bike. Not an ordinary bike, but a Schwinn built deluxe auto cycle. It's the world's finest bike. It's fully equipped, too, and worth over $79. There are models for boys, models for girls. Right now, get pencil and paper ready. Get set to hear full details in just a few minutes. Sarah Miller was a determined woman as her husband, Jed, who ran the trading post, well knew, and the people of Selkirk were fast finding out. When Sarah decided that Selkirk needed spiritual guidance to overcome the influence of the Nugget Cafe, she formed a committee and set about to raise funds for a small meeting house. One day, Sarah triumphantly faced the members of the church committee who had been called to meet at the trading post. Are they all here, Jed? The whole committee? Well, you can see for yourself, Sarah. The widow Jones... Banker Weeks and Constable Roder with you and me. I'm just dying of curiosity, Sarah. Yeah, what's the news you got for us? I hurried right over from the bank, Sarah. <clears throat> Worthy members of the church committee, I've called you together this afternoon. Now, for heaven's uh, sake, don't go trying to make a speech. Get to the point. You'll be quiet, Jim. Uh, uh, Banker Weeks, uh, when will that meeting house be ready, do you think? Well, I reckon it'll be ready by the time we get a parson here. The whole meeting's in it, Sarah. <laughs> It'll be ready before Sarah gets around to telling about that letter, seems to me. <laughs> Jed, if you don't... I'm shut up. Go ahead with the meeting. In my letter, I said we needed an able preacher who could get and hold a congregation in spite of the opposition we'll get from the cafe owner. Rusty Ward is a mean one to have opposing you. Any preacher that comes here to Selkirk will have to be the two-fisted fighting type to be able to stay. We'll see that the parson isn't bothered by Rusty and his crowd. Sergeant Preston came into town today, and he's going to be here a while. If he's here when the parson gets started, Preston will see to it... Jed, will you be quiet and let me talk? I've never found any way to keep you from it, so go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Do tell us about what the letter said, Sarah. Well, I'm trying to, if I can get a word in edgewise. My former pastor said in the letter that he found a young man just out of the seminary who's willing to come up here. A young parson of, uh, of great Spiritual worth. Uh, just the words he used in the letter. Oh, sure, sure. oh I just can't wait to meet him. Oh, don't forget, just... Clarabella. The letter said he's young. <laughs> that let you out, Clarabella. Jim, why are <laughs> stopping in? Uh, the new parson left about the time the letter did. That means he'll be coming most any time now. Well, sure and uh, we'll get time. every available yeah. man we can to finish the work on the inside of the meeting house. The new parson can stay in our spare room for the time being till we get a cabin built for him. Well, having that parson here is going to change things for the better in Selkirk. Maybe the man won't go in for so much carousing and gambling at Rusty Ward's Nugget Cafe then. That's right. There'll be plenty of competition between Rusty and the parson, but I'm betting on the parson. Well, let's go. We have a lot to do. During the next few days, many of the men in Selkirk turned out either to lend a hand in finishing the interior of the meeting house or to stand by and watch the efforts of those who were working. Among the latter were Rusty Ward and his right-hand man, Lou Martin. The two of them stood in the open doorway as Rusty sneeringly commented, I understand they're expecting a parson to come to Selkirk soon, Lou. Guess he'll do his best to take away a lot of our customers. How's he going to do that, Rusty? By preaching to them, that's how. 
We'll get him to let up on coming to the cafe to gamble and all. Ah, oh, stop worrying. Nobody will listen to him. I'm not so sure about that, Lou. I thought of a way to handle him before he gets a good start. Oh, yeah? How you figure on doing it? I've shown him up before the whole town. What do you mean by that? I mean making him look like he isn't any better than the ones he's trying to save. You know, make make him out to be just as bad as any of them. Yeah, but how are you going to do it, Rusty? Wait till he gets here and I see what he looks like. Then I'll tell you what I plan to do. Come on, let's get back to the cafe. A few minutes after Rusty and Lou left, the great dog King and his master, Sergeant Preston, approached the open doorway of the new meeting house. Let's take a look inside, King. As King and Sergeant Preston stepped inside the doorway, a jolly-looking, heavy-set man painting a windowsill to one side of the doorway hailed them. Hi there, Sergeant. Hello, Mike. <laughs> sure, and even King seems to be saying hello to me. That's right. King's always glad to meet our friends, eh, fella? I uh, didn't expect to find you in here working with the rest, Mike. Sure, and why not, I'd like to know. Just doing no harm to help these folks get a place ready where they can hear a bit of preaching, says I. Glad you feel that way about it. I think a bit of religion is needed here. That it is, sir. But between you and me, I'm thinking the new preacher is going to have a bit of trouble when he gets here. Huh? What makes you think that, Mike? Well, now, just a short time ago, while I was busy painting here at this window, Rusty Ward and that muscle-bound helper of his, Lou Martin, stood at the door sill watching. They didn't see me, of course. They was watching the others back there. And then they started talking. About what? About the new preacher, that's what. Rusty says he's planning to show off the preacher. Make him seem like he's just as bad as any other man, he says. So the preacher will have to leave town. Did he say how he intended to discredit the new person? No. Rusty said he wanted to get a look at him first. Then he'd tell his plan to Lou. Hmm. Tis some strange monkey business he's hatching up. You can bet on that, Sergeant. Them two will bear watching, says I. Yes. Thanks for telling me, Mike. King and I will be on hand to help the person if he needs it. Well, we'll see you again. So long. So long, Sergeant. Goodbye, King. Several days later, an Eskimo arrived at the trading post with the news that he had passed a sled down trail from Selkirk. It was driven by an Eskimo guide and carried the new parson. Sarah Miller immediately sent out word, and soon the church committee, with other curious onlookers, waited outside the trading post for the dog sled bearing the parson to arrive. Well, well, having a preacher in Selkirk is going to mean a lot to this town. <laughs> Maybe everybody will get religion, Constable. We won't need you anymore. Oh, well, shut up, Jeb. <laughs> the parson can make a better man out of you. I'll be satisfied. <laughs> oh, Sarah, listen. I hear a dog team coming now. Look, it's turning into the main street and heading for here. Oh, I, I'm so excited. Oh, I, just I, calm I, down, Clarabella. It's not fit for a widow to get excited like a schoolgirl. <laughs> uh, Sarah isn't any judge of how a widow feels, is she, Clarabella? Well, I will be, and right soon, too, Jed, if you don't keep quiet. Oh, here he comes. Oh, 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 he's getting out yeah. now. Good gosh, look. Great day. Is that the right. science feller, the new parson? Sarah. Sakes alive, look there. He's such a little man. Why, here he comes. I beg your pardon. I, I'm looking for Mrs. Miller. I'm Mrs. Miller. I guess you're the Reverend Meadows. Yes, I am. Well, welcome to Selkirk, Reverend Meadows. Uh, these are the other members of the church committee. My husband, Jed. How do you do, Mr. Miller? Howdy, Parson. You know, we were sort of expecting you to be a big man. Quiet, Jed. Uh, Reverend Meadows, uh, meet Banker Wee, uh, Constable uh, Roder, and, and the widow Joe. How do you do? Well, uh, Parson, like Jed said, uh, I mean, no offense, you understand. Uh, we were sort of expecting a much larger man than you. There's a right tough element in Selkirk that needs a bit of religion beat into their thick skulls. Right. Constable Roder, I, I'm here to preach religious faith to all who care to listen. But each man is master of his own soul. No one can be made to believe in the doctrines of religion by force. <laughs> well said, Parson. Very well said. Uh, Jed, get the Reverend Meadows' baggage and bring it in. Uh, come along inside, Mr. Meadows. The widow Jones and I will get you settled. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Miller. <laughs> we'll wait a very long time. Say, now, I didn't expect to see a half pint fellow like that come out here as Parson. Well, maybe he's all right, Bank of Weeks, but I'm thinking he just won't get anybody to go to meetings. I wonder what Sarah was thinking about it. She looked disappointed to me, but uh, she didn't let on. Howdy, Constable. I uh, see the new parson just got in. <laughs> yeah, got a good name for him. 
The Reverend Shorty Meadows. How's that? Uh, <laughs> see here, Ward. If you religion hunting folks intend to clean up Selkirk, you ought to get a real man to be a preacher. That's enough out of you, Rusty Ward. We want your opinion. Come on, we'll Constable. Ask. Help me with the parson's baggage. Anyway, I don't like the air around here right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need it. Uh, What's the matter, Rusty? Don't they like your company? Yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> And Lou, did you see the half pint that come here as parson? <laughs> yeah. He couldn't stand up against anybody in this town, man or boy. Yet he said a few words here that makes me think he might have a persuading way about him, even if he is a runt. Lou, before the week is over, the Reverend Shorty Meadows is going to wish he never heard of Selkirk. You can mark my words on that. <laughs> We'll continue our story in just a moment. Listen, just listen to this. Here's a chance to win a bike, a dream bike, a brand new, shiny new, fully equipped Schwinn Deluxe Autocycle, the world's finest bicycle. Don't miss out. Talk about fun. Quaker puffed wheat and rice, the cereal shot from guns, are offering 101 Schwinn Deluxe Autocycles, each worth more than $79 in the easiest, most fun contest ever. Think of it. The bike you win is fully equipped. It has these sensational features. Hand-operated, front and rear, fast-stopping expander brakes. Patented cantilever frame, plus exclusive Schwinn spring fork to absorb rough road shocks. Slipstream built-in electric fender light. In addition to kickstand, chain guard, streamlined tank, battery container, and horn. What's more, each of these 101 keen new bikes is equipped with the new Stuart Warner Golden Meteor Speedometer and a bike pilot compass. No fooling, these bikes have everything, even white wall balloon tires. Models for boy contest winners are sparkling maroon with ivory trim. Girl winners get special, fully equipped, smart blue models. They're beauties, too. Grand prize winner also receives a Zenith Zenet radio for his or her bike. Now listen carefully. Here's how you enter this easy contest. Just finish this sentence in 15 additional words or less. My favorite college pennant on the Quaker puffed wheat or rice package is... Now, that's the start of the sentence. All you do is finish it. It couldn't be easier. Just pick up a package of Quaker puffed wheat or rice. Look at the back of the package. On the back, you'll find a series of colorful flags. Pick out your favorite and tell us why you like it. No fancy writing necessary. Here are examples to help you. My favorite college pennant on the Quaker puffed wheat or rice package is Notre Dame. I like it because Notre Dame has swell football teams. Or, I like the Pennsylvania flag because its colors, red and blue, are my favorite colors. That's all there is to it. You can easily do better. Just a few simple words of your own can win you the world's finest bike. A fully equipped Schwinn Deluxe Autocycle with a retail value of over $79. Jot down your entry on a piece of paper. Include your name and address printed plainly. Mail with one box top from any package of Quaker Puff wheat or rice. Send it right away to Bike Contest, Box 600, Minneapolis, Minnesota. You send no money, just one box top from Quaker Puffed wheat or rice with each entry. But hurry, mail today to Bike Contest, Box 600, Minneapolis, Minnesota. <laughs> Now to continue our story. As Rusty and Lou walked away after watching the arrival of the dog sled that had brought the little parson, King, standing beside Sergeant Preston at the corner of the building, growled instinctively. Quiet, King. Hi there, Sergeant. Hello, King. Hello, Mike. Did you see the parson arrive? That I did. I was standing at the edge of the crowd. Ah, uh, sure, and he's kind of undersized, seems like, for a place as tough as Selkirk. He is rather short, Mike, but he seems to be intelligent and alert. I noticed he didn't carry a gun, but there's something about the way he looks and moves that makes me think he might fool anyone who tried to pick on him. Is that so now? <laughs> well, anyway, I hope you're right. I saw Rusty Ward and Lou Martin watching and smirking like a couple of timber wolves, no less. Yes, I saw them. You were right, Mike. Those two are planning trouble for the new parson. That they are, and you can bet on it. They'll bear close watching, as you said before, Mike. Well, it's time for King and me to eat. One, King. The following night, Rusty and Lou sat at a corner table in the Nugger Cafe. After making certain no one was within hearing, 
Rusty spoke in low tones. Lou, I got my plan all worked out against that new parson. We'll try it out tomorrow evening. Yeah? What do you got figured out, Rusty? Hey, look. Last night and again tonight, I noticed that Shorty the parson walked from Miller's trading post to the new meeting house on the edge of town. I'm counting on him doing the same thing tomorrow night. He was alone each time I saw him. Go on, get to the point. Well, here's what I want you to do. Follow him to the meeting house. Then when you're sure no one's looking, go up to him and say what I tell you to say. What do you want me to say? Tell him there's a prospector in the back room here at the Nugget Cafe who's been hurt bad. But he's asking for a preacher. Yeah, but who's going to be in the back room asking for a preacher, Rusty? Nobody. Just tell the parson that. Maybe he won't come with me. He'll come with you, all right. Preachers are supposed to go to dying people if they ask for them. And what happens after he gets here? You'll find out after you bring him here, and so will he. <laughs> i tell you one thing, Lou. Yeah, what's that? After tomorrow night, none of those church people will want that half pint to lead their meetings. You can bet on that. As was his usual custom, after supper the following night, Parson Meadows walked to the meeting house. He spent a short time inside. Then he came out, closing and locking the door after him. Good evening, Parson. Good evening. I, I was told I might find you here, Parson. I, I've been hunting for you. What is it you want, my friend? Well, I... Will you come with me to the, to the Nugget Cafe right away? The Nugget Cafe? That's right. You see, Parson, uh, there's no pr prospector there in the back room. He, he's been hurt bad, and he keeps calling for a preacher. He says he don't want to die without talking to one, so I... I understand. I'm very glad you came for me. Then you'll come with me right away? Of course. Come on, Parson, let's hurry. A short time later, Lou Martin arrived at the back of the cafe building with the Parson. Now, here we are, Parson. This is the back door. He's in the back room right through that door. Come on. All right. Yeah, just go right in. Well, well, good evening, Parson. Good evening. Where's the old prospector who wants to talk to me? I'm the one who sent for you. Oh, but I was told someone was badly hurt here in this back room. Well, you see, nobody's been hurt yet. But before long, somebody will be, eh, Lou? Yeah. <laughs> Especially if that somebody got hit over the head with a gun butt. As Lou, standing a little behind the Parson, moved suddenly toward him, his arm raised to strike, a surprising thing happened. <laughs> The parson, in a lightning-like move, stepped aside and back. At the same time, grabbed at Lou. The small parson seemed to twist and pull without much effort. And yet the big, brawny body of Lou went flying forward, crashing into a table. Holy cow! Don't move, parson. A gun. Yeah, a gun. And I'll use it, too, if I have to. Get up, Lou, and come over here. Great day, Russia. I'm done with that little run, man. Forget it for now. Go behind him and tie his hands while I hold this gun on him. Sure. As soon as I get the cord. Yeah. This time, I won't miss. <laughs> I told you to tie him up. What did you slug him with a gun butt for? I don't trust that little runt. Even though that gun held on him. He's got tricks or something. He's tougher than he looks. Sure, I know. Help me pick him up. Put him in that chair at the gaming table. All right. <laughs> now what are you going to do? Take a look for a minute, Lou. See? <laughs> with that empty glass in front of him and the cards and chips and all. <laughs> How does it look to you? Yeah, it looks like he passed out while he was gambling. The way you fix his head down on his arms like that. I don't see what you're driving... I'm not through yet. Well, I go get some of the men out front in the cafe to stage a fight. You get the constable to come here. The parson will wake up to find he's in disgrace with the church people, so he'll have to leave Selkirk for good. <laughs> now, I'll go get things set. Then you can go and get the constable. All right, I'll see you. Meantime, at the small cabin he and King used when they came to Selkirk, Sergeant Preston received an unexpected visit from Mike O'Leary. Well, Mike, what brings you here tonight? Tis this I saw with me own two eyes. The little parson going into the back door of the Nugget Cafe with Lou Martin. The parson? Tis true as I'm standing here talking to you, Sergeant. And being suspicious of Rusty Ward and Lou Martin, I says to Mike, myself, I says... there's no telling what Rusty and Lou are up to. You'd better get over there right away. I'll get my park on. I'm sure the parson wouldn't go there, especially with Lou Martin, unless something was decidedly wrong. Let's go, Mike. Come on, King, let's go. About that time, the constable was at the trading post talking to Jed Miller. Well, Jed, have you decided what you think of that little parson? Just how does he stack up with you, anyway? Oh, I guess he's all right, constable. 
I can't get Sarah to say what she thinks about him, hey, but Constable. I think... Uh, you better come over to the Nugget Cafe right away. Some of the men are cutting loose again. Russ is afraid they'll wreck the place. Another ruckus at the cafe. Yeah. That place is getting worse every day. All right, I'll go try and calm them down. I'll come along with you and see what's going on. Yeah, we better hurry. They're really in a fight in the mood over there, Over in the cafe, Rusty was urging the men on so that the fight would look real when the constable arrived. Rub it up a little more to make it look real, man. But don't bust up any of the furniture or glassware. <laughs> It sure looks like the real thing now, Rusty. Yeah, it sure does. Well, I'll make it seem more real by firing a couple of shots. Boom! Hey, you shot down the hanging lamp. It hit Rusty and knocked him out. Look, the oil's caught fire. Hey, you run fast. Look, get out here. As Sergeant Preston with King and Mike hurried toward the Nugget Cafe, they heard the sudden commotion in the distance. Something's happened, Mike, at the cafe. Look, Sergeant. They're running out. The cafe's on fire. Glory be. The parson might still be in there, too. Come on, we'll run through to the back door of the cafe. Let's go, King. <laughs> Meantime, in the back room of the cafe, the parson gradually came to after being knocked out by Rusty. Oh. Oh, my head. That must have been... <laughs> Seems to be smoke coming under that door over there. The cafe's on fire. I'd better get out the back way. Help! I, I can't get out! Help, Parcel! Don't leave me in here! The cafe owner. I, I'm hurt. A hanging lamp fell. Hit my head. Knocked me out. The men slammed the table over on my leg. I think it's broke. Get me out. Help me. I'll move the table. Oh, there. Now I'll try to get you off. I, I wouldn't blame you if you... Don't time for talk. I'm, I'm pretty heavy. Don't worry. I, I think I can manage. You've got nerve, Parson. You're strong, too. I'm counting more on faith than on nerve right now, my friend. Easy now. Maybe you better... Hey, look out. Parson. Parson! <laughs> that beam clipped him. We, we haven't a chance now. Help! 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 Flames have reached the back room, Mike. Uh-oh, that's bad. Hey, two of them are still in there. Sergeant Preston and King. Hello, Constable. Who's still in there, Mike? The Parson was in that back room, and Rusty's not out either. Great day. The Parson in there? What was he Never doing? Never mind questions now, Jed. Come on, we'll have to get them out. You can't get in there now. We'll see about that. You'll never make up, Sergeant. As the group of men stood uncertain what to do, King, standing beside his master, heard the frantic cry for help. Even as Sergeant Preston paused momentarily at the doorway, King acted immediately, springing forward with a frenzied bark into the smoke-filled, flame-lighted cafe. King! He's going in to help. I'm going after him. Maybe together we can get him out. Wait, Sergeant! Don't ever make it! Wait! Be ready to help us when we come out. King! King! Where are they, fellas? <laughs> Get the parson. He's unconscious. I'll try to get you out. <laughs> the, the dog. He's, he's dragging the parson. We'll get out somehow. We've got to. Yeah, put your arm around you. <laughs> Outside the back door, the group waited with their eyes glued to the open door. Oh, they won't make it out. That dog king going in like that. I never saw the like of it, Jen. But I'm afraid they won't. Glory be! Hey, look, the dog coming to the doorway. He's dragging somebody. Oh, somebody. Preston's carrying Rusty. Come on, boys. It's the part of the dog we're dragging. I'll lift him. I'll help you, Sergeant. Right. Rusty Warden, the person who alive but unconscious. I'll put Rusty down here for a moment. Yeah. There. Here's the parson. King, uh, fella, you all right? Uh, he's a bit singed, but he seems all right. King saved the parson. Rusty's so big, I couldn't have bought both of them out at the same time. Well, take them to your place, Jed, and give them first aid. Right, Sergeant. Come on, boy. Give me a right, right up there. That's it. Right, At the Miller's quarters in the trading post, Rusty Ward and the parson received first aid and regained consciousness. After they had gained their strength later that night, the church committee gathered around the two chairs in which the two men sat. Reverend Miller, uh, we were concerned, of course, as to why you were in the cafe, but after getting the facts from Lou Martin, we decided the committee should give you a vote of confidence. Thank you, Mrs. Miller. Well, of course, Parson, you should have been more careful. It isn't fitting for a Parson to go into a place like that. With you being so meek and short and those men so big and tough. Uh, hold on, Banker Weeks. Lou and I can tell you he may be short, but he isn't meek. And Lou can tell you he's plenty tough, too. He fooled me. 
Toss me around plenty in that back room. Oh, Watch out yourself. Oh, sure. Things. A parson acting <laughs> tough. <laughs> the church can be militant as well as meek when necessary, Mrs. Miller. The parson come in after me because he has faith. If that's what his religion means, then I'm, I'm for it. <laughs> I did him a dirty trick, and he tried to save me. Well, no, that's money. Money. From now on, nobody's going to say anything about Parson Shorty Meadows while I'm around. Parson Shorty Meadows? What a thing to say. <laughs> I used to be called Shorty Meadows in college, Rusty, so don't be embarrassed. Say, uh, I've heard of a Shorty Meadows who took top honors as an athlete at a California university a few years ago. Could it be that you... Yes, I'm that Shorty Meadow, Sergeant. I took up boxing and wrestling, too, as sort of a defensive measure. Then I went to the theological seminary. Hey, Thunder, it looks like we got a fighting parson after all. Mercy, I had no idea we'd get a parson. Shut up, I... Sarah, you jabber too much. Oh. <laughs> you got the spiritual worth you want in Parson Meadows, and we got the toughness we want in Shorty Meadows. Parson? Yes. Since you prefer to convert Rusty and Lou instead of prosecuting them for what they did to you, I think the constable and I can forget the matter. That's right. But I wonder if King is willing to let him off. He don't like men who pull dirty tricks. What do you say, King? Seems to me that as far as King and I are concerned, this case is closed, eh, fella? <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's program. Hurry, time's a-wastin'. Don't miss your chance to win a bike. A shiny new Schwinn Deluxe Autocycle. Our big new Quaker Popped Wheat and Wrights Contest offers 101 of these fully equipped bicycles, each worth more than $79. Enter today. Finish this sentence in 15 words or less. My favorite college pennant on the Quaker Popped Wheat... Or rice package is... Completing that sentence is easy. Fun. First, look for the colorful college flags on the back of packages of Quaker puffed wheat or rice. Then, pick out your favorite and write down why. Here's an example. My favorite college pennant on the Quaker puffed wheat or rice package is California. I like it because I want to go to school there someday. Send your entry together with your name and address and one Quaker puffed wheat or rice box top to Bike Contest, Box 600, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Contest closes midnight Saturday, October 23rd. Anyone living in continental United States can enter except employees of the Quaker Oats Company, their advertising agencies, and families. Entries judged on basis of originality, suitability, and aptness. Duplicate prizes for ties. Judge's decision final. All entries and ideas therein become property of the Quaker Oats Company. Here's a tip. Mail your entry today without delay. Send to Bike Contest, Box 600, Minneapolis, Minnesota. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure of the Red Ace. A number of mysterious robberies brought King and me to the town of Three Falls. A criminal known as the Red Ace, because he always leaves the Ace of Diamonds at the scene of his crime presents a baffling case to King and me. Be sure to hear this exciting story Monday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Popped Wheat and Quaker Popped Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.